that has helped us to identify our funding needs, especially for the sick with the help and guidance that they are giving. Our ministry to the sick is now more organized, more efficient and systematic. They have been doing their best to assist us and to work from where we are so that we could truly function as such. One thing that Spring Rain was able to help us and has been going on until now is really connecting a lot of people and not only here in the Philippines but also in abroad. They have given us the right mindset, the skill set and the tool set that we need in order to establish our office and to raise funds for our apostolate in education. It was very chaotic before spring rain. We were just scrambling and trying to figure things out where spring rain came and gave us the technology on how to run it properly. We had departments roles and it was an organized machine where it's just like a business or any entity that it would function on its own even if one person's not there or the president is not there the foundation is constantly moving and functioning for the new PDOs the resources that you have will be maximized because of the system that spring rain will teach you and will share with you the system has helped us how to pull resources how to manage the fund, how also to manage our advocacies, our activities and program, how to sustain it and plans are being done for its continuity. I would like to invite you to engage with Spring Rain and help the people, your community, more with the system. Without the system, it will block succession. If you have the right skillful people without the system, then it cannot sustain long enough. If you have a system without the right people, then you miss the opportunity of maximizing the whole process. There's a lot of donor fatigue that is happening right now. It's not because they don't want to give. It's about being annoyed by the manner of asking. It's actually the manner of the way we are communicating with the donor. The perennial problem that we have been encountering is the problem of sustainability. Partly because we haven't nourished and nurtured relationships with our different benefactors all these years. That's when I see the great potential that once we are able to connect and to nurture our relationship with our donors and eventually make their donation, make their giving more of a happy experience, then probably things will be better so that it doesn't become a linear type of relationship, but it becomes a mutual kind of relationship. When the donor gives, he is happy. He is happy because he was able to give. And of course, he is happy that he is being regularly updated by the happenings and the updates of the foundation itself. We are able to see more people who are really not only business driven, but deep inside, they want to make their businesses even more meaningful they are finding meaning on giving impact to the lives of others. It ignites more our desire to do mission, to expand our mission. We are very excited to continue doing it and to be more serious about it. It takes a way to really study them and learn about how these donors need to get motivated, get involved, so that the fatigue that is happening will turn into a transformation of partnership, love, generosity, and it will create a very wonderful family in the world of philanthropy.
Good evening, everyone, and also good morning and good afternoon to those who are joining us from the other parts of the world via Facebook Live. Welcome to the second day of Spring Rain Global's 45 Days Lenten Recollection, a Lenten journey of faith in the life of the saints. We are live every day for the next 45 days via Zoom and on the Facebook page of Spring Rain Global. To ensure the solemnity of the recollection, may I request everyone to please keep your microphones on mute as soon as you log in and for the whole duration of the program. Let us now begin with our opening song, followed by the Spring Rain Global Prayer. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spring Rain Global Prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be called in this noble endeavor of serving people and organizations through our thrust for a deeper love for humanity and stewardship of our giftedness. As we respond to this ministry each day, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit, that your wisdom may enlighten us, that your strength may remind us to stay focused in our purpose and calling, that your light be our guide at all times, and that your love be in our hearts. We know that the journey may not always be easy, but we firmly believe and hold on to your promise that you will be with us both in our challenges and victories as we bring love and unity to your people in service for others. We continue to pray that as we grow the mission and purpose of our Spring Rain Global Family, we may be sustained by your grace, ready to open the path for others, so that your blessings and divine providence may completely flow to each and every one of us. May we always stay in your grace, now and forever. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now play the national anthems of the Philippines, U.S., and Singapore to signify the countries where Spring Rain Global is registered and operating. Bayang magigyo, deras na silang ana. Adap ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay Lupang hinirang, tuyan ka ng magiting Sa pantulungin, di ka pa sisiging Sa dagat at bulong, sa simoy at sa langit mong bukaw May dilag ang buna at awit sa paglayang minamahal Ang islap ng watawang mo'y tagu, may nanang minuling Ang bituin ng araw niya kay Dan Ang may di magdidilig Lupa ng araw ng wal Aking pagsinta Buhay ay langit sa pinuho Aming ligaya na pag may mag-aakit Ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright star through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets replay the box bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there or oh, say just that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Mari kita rakyat Singapura sama-sama menuju bahagia cita-cita kita yang mulia berjaya Singapura marilah kita bersatu Dengan semangat yang baru, semua kita berseru 
Majulah Singapura, majulah Singapura. Marilah kita bersatu dengan semangat yang baru. Semua kita berseru. Majulah Singapura, majulah Singapura. Tonight's speaker will be guiding us in our reflection about the journey of faith in the life of Saint Faustina. We will be guided in our reflection by Ms. Tess Tingson, the Director, National Service Training Program, NSTP, Executive Assistant to the President of Colegio San Agustin Bacolod. Good evening, ma'am. Nakamute po. Good evening, everyone. Or Good day to everyone. So may I just uh, share my screen first? Can you see my screen? Not yet. Oh, not yet, I think. Okay. Am I sharing my screen now, ma'am? I cannot see on my side. Uh, Kleine, can you confirm? Not yet on my own. Uh, not yet, Ms. Tess. I think I have a problem sharing my screen. Can I just, uh, um, perhaps I can uh, let you, okay. Are you able to send a file, Ms. Tess? We can share it for you. Uh, I was not able to, to uh, share the file because um, I'm working here. Uh, earlier, it's working here. So maybe I can hear the file now. Here. Okay. Um, let me see. <laughs> Can I just post the, the file on the chat box and then somebody will just get it? Yes, please do. Or maybe you could direct it to Climid. Yeah, I will.
Okay, sorry for that. Um, let me just share without uh, the, the PowerPoint because I cannot share it now. Let me see. Okay, so tonight we are going to talk about the life of Sister Faustina. The whole earthly life of Sister Faustina evolved actually on a deeper understanding and experience of God's powerful mercy in her life. She was able to experience God's mercy in the way that she was touched by the Lord, her soul was touched by the Lord in her experiences. But I think I really have to share this, uh, the, the file. So let me, mom, can I have, I cannot share it here in the chat box directly to, to mom, can? Yes, ma'am, please do. Okay. We will wait, please bear with us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just share it through your email na lang. Yes, ma'am, it's okay. Um, I shared it already with uh, Mom Glenda, her email. Okay, Miss, uh, she's downloading it to Kleinin. Um, everyone, please uh, hold on for a while. We are trying to fix the, uh, uh, the slides of Miss Ting Son. Thank you.
Okay, I think that's my slide. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to an evening of divine mercy, an evening of mercy. And we shall be sharing or reflecting on the life of Sister Faustina, most especially on how merciful has been or had been Jesus to our saint. So tonight, we shall appreciate divine mercy in the life of this saint. The whole life of Sister Faustina evolved actually on a deeper understanding and experience and the practice and the practice of God's mercy. The Lord used this simple soul to tell the whole world of his ocean of mercy. You can see at my, my virtual background, that is the, the chapel in the shrine of the divine mercy where the actual image of the divine mercy and the tomb of Sister Faustina can be found. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so let us reflect on how on God's call for us to possess spiritual childhood and what is spiritual childhood. In our catechism, we were taught that we are in the image, we are created in the image and likeness of God. And it is therefore, I should say, expected that we look like Jesus. Has anybody told you that you look like Jesus? Or sometimes we, we were told that, you know, you're an angel to me, or you are my savior, because we have done something good to that person, and that person is so grateful to us. And she would, or he would tell us, no, you are my savior. According to Sister Faustina, we resemble God the most when we are merciful. So actually, the looks is not important, how beautiful or handsome we are. It's not important. It's the quality of our soul. It's how we carry Jesus in our hearts. That is the most significant part when we say a person is merciful. One year before her death, Sister Faustine had this very unusual experience of God. But early on her life, in her life, she had been experienced God very personally, very intimate. Uh, next slide, please. In fact, at the age of seven, uh, she was already having this interior movements in her heart. What you can see now before that is the place, is the house of uh, Sister Faustina. Her baptismal name is Helena. Uh, Kowalska. In um, Polish language, W becomes letter V. So it's uh, pronounced Helena Kowalska. She was born on August 25, 1905 to a poor peasant, but very prayerful family in the village of Gogowiec, northern part of Poland. She's the third in the family of 10. So, um, medyo malaki ang family nila. And, um, her parents, Marianne and Stanislaw Kowalski, were peasants, were poor farmers. And so um, Helena grew, uh, grew in this place, in this village. And early on in her life, can you please uh, pick the next slide? Early on in her life, Helena had their, these interior movements, I was saying earlier. Once she was at the chapel, having this, um, joining the adoration in the chapel and seeing the, the white piece of bread in the moonstrands, she know, she, she experienced something that um, this piece of white bread in the moonstrands is actually Jesus. It's actually him 
who I am going to receive later in my life. And so at a very young age, Jesus was already preparing her for the mission. This constant and uh, little by little revelations to Helena prepared her for a very long, a very powerful mission on earth. And this, in, there, in that slide here, in, in this slide that I'm showing right now, this is the church of St. Casimir. This is the church where Helena was baptized in 1905. And there is another very powerful experience in this church. During um, her first Holy Communion in 1914. After her Holy Communion, you know, the usual young people that do, that they do, uh, they they um, so happy with their, you know, beautiful dress. Uh, perhaps the party that will come after the first communion. And the gifts, perhaps, that they will be receiving. But Helena from the church walking to, to her house. She was walking alone and uh, a neighbor told her, Helena, why are you walking alone? And Helena answered, I am not walking alone because Helena experienced the presence of Jesus in her heart. And in that experience, her, her perspective changed. You know, I am not alone. How many of us succumb to depression? Because our perspective is, I'm always alone. Many people, succumb to suicidal tendencies or even commit suicides, suicide because they feel they are alone. But Helena, early on in her life, she was, as she had her first communion at the age of nine, she experienced and she knew for a fact that always she is not alone. She is with Jesus. And so after this first Holy Communion, next slide, please. Helena had her first revelation. You know, she was at a dance. And, uh, you know, just like the, the usual young people who would like to, you know, enjoy life. And her, in her accounts in, in the diary, she said, as I began to dance, I suddenly saw Jesus at my side. Jesus rocked with pain, stripped off his clothing, all covered with wounds, who spoke to these, spoke these words to me. How long shall I put up with you? And how long will you keep me, keep putting me off? She said, at that moment, the charming music stopped. Everybody was hearing the music except Helena. And I was with, and the company vanished from my sight. It was, she, she realized that there was only he, her and Jesus. And she continued, I took a seat by my dear sister, pretending to have a headache in order to cover up what took place in my soul. After a while, I slipped out unnoticed, leaving my sister and all my companions behind and made way to the cathedral of St. Stanislaw Kostka. It was almost twilight. There were only a few people in the cathedral and she prayed. And she fell prostrate before the Blessed Sacrament and begged the Lord to be good to her, to understand her. Then she heard these words. Go at once to Warsaw. 
you will enter a convent. And she rose from prayer, came home, and prepared her things. And the following day, she went to Warsaw. Actually, at the age of 18, she would she already had this um, uh, deep desire to go to uh, to enter the convent. But you know, they are poor, so her parents did not permit her. But this time, her parents permitted her to go to Warsaw. And so what happened to Warsaw? Can you please uh, click the, the next slide? So next slide, please. Okay, so this is the convent in Warsaw. You know what happened? She went to Warsaw <clears throat> because Jesus told her so. But she um, went from one convent to another and nobody and no convent would like to accept her. What happened after that? She went to this convent, Our Lady of Mercy, Our Lady of uh, Mercy, yes, a congregation. And this is the, the place, as you can see on my slide. And they did not, actually, they did not accept her. In the accounts of uh, the Mother Superior, you know, there is this memoirs of the sisters. Um, these memoirs are, are the written accounts of their experiences with, with uh, Sister Faustina. And these accounts cannot be uh, read in the diary. In that account, the Mother Superior said, when I saw her, when, when she saw um, Helena, she told herself that she cannot enter the convent because she's poor. During the, this time, you need to buy your own religious habit before you can enter the convent. And so Helena was told, okay, come back after one year. You know, the difficulty of like you, Jesus telling me, go to Warsaw and enter the convent. And now here I come. Nobody accepts me. And that's the start of a difficult life. So what did she do? She applied for a, to be a, ha a housemaid. And uh, her, her salary or her, her pay as a housemaid for one year, she, she saved it. And after a year, she went to the convent and gave the money. And uh, she was accepted. And now she became a sister in the convent of the Our Lady of Mercy, the congregation of Our Lady of Mercy. Her life was not actually a life of you know, um, it's a mixture of, of difficulty. You know, the Lord will tell, me, tell, tell her this, but after some time, it seems that the Lord is absent in her life. But she continued. Despite the difficulties, she continued. And now she's inside the convent. And you know, um, when you are inside the convent, I, I think the sisters know this. She, uh, Helena, or Sister Faustina, was an uneducated person when she entered the convent. And so she was given that very, uh, yeah, how would you say it? So you say it, difficult task in the convent. Uh, next slide, please. So she entered the convent on August 1, 1925 in this convent in Warsaw. Next slide, please. Okay, now she is Sister Faustina upon enter entering the convent. And life was not easy in the convent. 
um, she had experience, um, you know, assignments in the kitchen, in the garden, or many times she's transferred from one convent to another. And so her life was a mixture of difficulties and confusions. Why am I experiencing this? Am I, am I um, a normal person? And so all her, her, her experiences taught her to, to call for help from the merciful Lord. It was night, actually, when the, the, the Lord Jesus appeared to Sister Faustina. It was an evening. You know, what's associated with evening. It's rest. The night becomes peaceful. The day's work is over. And it's the end of the day. And so for her, Nothing unusual. She, she just went to her room, perhaps to sleep. But when she entered the room, she saw Jesus. Can you click the next slide? It was on February 22, 1931. Today is February 23. It was the beginning of the prophetic mission. And Jesus told her, paint the image as you can see. After this revelation, Faustina experienced the difficulty of letting people understand the revelations. Of course, it's really um, understandable. You, you don't, you don't um, agree to someone who, who will tell you, I saw Jesus, I was talking to Jesus. It's the wisdom of the church. And actually, when she was sharing all these things, all the revelations to, to her uh, superior, the superior was, was very um, afraid that this, this um, news or this happening Will be um, will will be shared outside of the convent. So in a way, they 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 would like her to to uh, not to talk about it. And one day, actually, the the, the mother superior, because Helena was so in, or Sister Faustina was so insistent that. Um, the image should, should be painted. And the mother superior, superior told her, okay, here are the paints. You do it yourself. But she could not. She could not paint. And actually, she was trying to ask the sisters to, to paint, but no one among the sisters would like to paint or who, who knows how to paint. And they started all the sufferings that associated with this uh, mission of Sister Faustina. Before her death, she was then 32, 32, 32 years old because she died 33 years old, just like Jesus. Uh, Faustina wrote a very beautiful prayer, asking God for mercy. And let us journey with this prayer all together. Let us journey with this prayer. And I will illustrate each invocation with her life, with her daily life, as uh, can be read in the accounts, in the memoirs of the sisters. These are not found in the diary, but this can be found in the memoirs of the sisters because in the diary, all that's written there is focused on Jesus. Naturally, Faustina will be focusing on her Lord, on her merciful Lord. And so the accounts on her day-to-day -day life can be read in the memoirs of the sisters. 
the sisters who, who were with her uh, in the different convents that she was assigned to. And so the first invocation in that prayer says, kindly, uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Faustina prayed to Jesus and she said, help me, O Lord, that my eyes be merciful, that my eyes may be merciful so that I may never suspect or judge from appearances, but look for what is beautiful in my neighbor's souls and come to the rescue. Only those eyes that are full of mercy can see beauty and goodness in other people. They are able to look beyond the externals. St. John Paul II in his encyclicals, encyclical, Divas Misericordia, wrote, mercy draws good from all evil, from all forms of evil in the world. One of the sisters, Sister the Divina shares, one day while traveling with Sister Faustina, they were conversing on some matters about convent life perhaps. And uh, Sister Litvina knew nothing about Jesus' revelations to Sister Faustina. The latter doesn't share about her divine experiences. However, Sister Litvina said, I listened to her intently because she was more spiritual than I am. And after listening to her, I feel so uplifted because she was able to see even the smallest sign of goodness. She never spoke negatively of anyone. Instead, she tried her best to look for the good in everyone. Do we do that? Do we try to see, to try to look for the good in everyone? Another account about our saint is from Sister Serafina. Again, these are from the memoirs of the sisters. She recalled that the time when Saint Faustine was assigned in the kitchen to cook for more than 40 people. And she was given an assistant. And uh, according to Sister Serafina, that girl, the assistant that was given to, to, uh, to Sister Faustina, is a girl with such an unpleasant character. So you see, the, this is a religious sister talking. So she's perhaps uh, very careful of the, the words that she's using. But she added, so unpleasant is her character that no one would like to work with her. So you can just imagine uh, what kind of creature must, must this girl be? The assistant of uh, Sister Faustina. Sister Serafina continues, <clears throat> after working with Sister Faustina, this girl changed incomprehensibly and there is no magic in here. Undoubtedly, our saints silent yet heavenly influence upon sinful souls, that merciful gaze can uplift a wounded soul. You know, my dear friends, many times in our life, criticism, constant nagging will not change a person. I'm sure you have experienced that. A suspicious, critical, judgmental look and an attitude of indifferent will never help a person. It will only affirm evil. And let us learn from Sister Faustina. The next invocation in that prayer is, um, next slide please. 
she is asking the Lord to help her to have merciful ears. And she prayed, help me that my ears may be merciful so that I may give heed to my neighbor's needs and not be indifferent to the pains and moanings. Sister Faustina wrote in her diary in March 1937, she was in the hospital this time because she was she had tuberculosis. The doctor did not allow me to go to the chapel, although I had great desire to do it, but I just prayed in my room. Suddenly I heard the bell in my next room and I went in to help a seriously sick person. When I returned to my room, I suddenly saw the Lord Jesus who said to me, my daughter, you gave me greater pleasure by rendering that service than if you have prayed for a long time. And I said, but it was not to you, Lord, that I rendered that service. It was to that patient. Yes, my daughter. But whatever you do for your neighbor, you can continue that. You do it for me. It's in the scriptures. So the diary and the scriptures are really the same. Faustina was, not, was sick in that hospital. She was a patient too. She was not a nurse. If she did not go to that um, sick person, nobody will get angry with her. But you know, the heart of a merciful person goes contrary to our self-centered nature. And we can only do that with merciful ears. Next slide, please. The next invocation is, Faustina was asking the Lord, praying for a merciful tongue. And she prayed, help me, O Lord, that my tongue may be merciful so that I should never speak negatively of my neighbor, but have a word of comfort and forgiveness for all. This time, let us take an account from the diary. Uh, Faustina said, today I was visited by a lay person who caused me a lot of sorrow and who has abused my goodness, telling many lies against me. The first moment I saw her, the blood froze in my veins. I like this expression, you know. It means that she's really human being like human, a human being like us, a real person, but she's a saint. The blood froze in my veins, she continued. Because there stood before my eyes the person who has caused a lot of my sufferings. And the thought came to me that I have to tell her the truth firmly and immediately. But at that moment, the mercy of God came. And I resolved to act toward her as Jesus would do. You know, in our day-to-day -day life, when the time comes that we, we don't know what to do, it's a good um, tool for discernment. Let us ask, what would Jesus do if he is here? And so, uh, Faustina continued, and so I started talking to her gently. And when she expressed that she would like to talk to me alone, I told her clearly the sad state of her soul. She was moved and she tried to hide this from me. And then I heard the Lord Jesus, I am glad you behave like my true daughter. 
Be always merciful as I am merciful. Love everyone as you've loved me, even your greatest enemy, so that my mercy will be reflected in your heart. Clearly, in loving people who are undesirable and lovable and pleasant, those who have caused us so much pain, it is not our mercy that we give. We are just channels of his mercy. And therefore, in our struggle to be merciful, let us trust that his grace will always be enough. We just have to allow ourselves to be vessels of his goodness and mercy. You know, we are just channels of his goodness. We are not the one giving mercy to other people. Let us remember that always. We are just vessels of God's mercy. The next invocation in that prayer is Faustina asking the Lord to give her a merciful or merciful hands. And she prayed, help me, O Lord, that my hands may be merciful and filled with good deeds so that I may do only good to my neighbors and take upon myself the more difficult and toilsome tasks. Let us take another beautiful story from the memoirs of the sister. Sister Justina accounts about the story in the convent in Vilnius where Sister Faustina was assigned in the garden. You know, she is not prepared for such kind of work. And it was truly hard for her. At that time, she was already sickly, but she does the daily work in the garden very well, without complaining. Sister Justina was assigned at the kitchen. She was alone, alone every day, doing all the work in the kitchen. Often it's already time to go to bed, but uh, Sister Justina has still a lot of things to do in the kitchen. Perhaps um, a lot of cleaning, endless washing. But you know, Sister Faustina would always stop at the kitchen and check on Sister Justina and would always help her finish the task. Although Sister Justina knew that Sister Faustina was already exhausted because the day's work was truly hard in the garden. And at that time, she was already sickly. How often do we detour whenever we don't like to extend a hand to someone else? Because we were always thinking that I am tired. I don't have enough to give. Some people would even say, what will I get from helping that person? You know, Faustina had a great love and compassion for everyone. Seeing the accounts of the sisters, they said Faustina was always consistent in her goodness. Therefore, my dear friends, mercy is not just today and tomorrow, but mercy is a lifestyle. It's a way of life. Giving mercy to other people to other people it's not seasonal mercy it should be consistent there should be consistency in our being merciful our next invocation in the prayer of saint faustina she says help me that my feet may be merciful so that I may hurry to assist my neighbor, overcoming my own fatigue and weariness. My true rest is in the service of my neighbor. Overcoming my own fatigue and weariness, she says, my true rest is at the service of my neighbor. Let's take a look at the image of Jesus. 
in divine mercy. Take a look at his feet. Try to see his feet walking in haste toward you, towards you. There is another story in the diary. In 1936, she wrote, I was feeling more ill than usual. And so I directly went to my bedroom. But when I entered my room, I suddenly felt interiorly that I should go to the cell of Sister N. In the past, they called their room cell. I think the sisters know this. And when I entered her room, she said, Oh, how good it is that God brought you here, sister. Her voice was so weak that I could hardly hear her. She said, this sister Anne said, please bring me some tea because I am terribly thirsty and I cannot move. I am in pain. And truly, Faustina continued, she was suffering with a high fever. I made her comfortable and let her sip the tea little by little. And later, Faustina said, I entered my room so engulfed by the love of God. Notice my dear friends that Sister Anne said to Sister Faustina, oh, how good it is that God brought you here, sister. You know, whenever we allow God's mercy to flow from our heart to our hands, to our hands, we provide people the opportunity to see God even in the most destitute situations in life. I believe you have experienced the same. Jesus told St. Faustina, tell them, that no soul that has called upon my mercy has been disappointed or brought to shame. I delight particularly in a soul which has placed its trust in my goodness. And the next invocation is Faustina prays. Help me, O Lord, that my heart may be merciful so that I myself may feel all the sufferings of my neighbor. I will refuse my heart to no one. I will be sincere even with those who I know will abuse my goodness, and I will lock myself up in the most merciful heart of Jesus. I will bear my own suffering in silence. May your mercy, O Lord, rest upon me. There is an amazing story from the memoirs of the sisters as told by Sister Samuela. I'm sure we are familiar with old wooden doors, wooden floors rather, those we can see in the ancestral houses, wooden floors which are rough or uneven ones. So just a uh, steer your imagination these kind of wooden floors, old, rough, um, not even. In this convent, it was Sister Faustina's task to clean the wooden floor, and she spent many hours scrubbing the floor on her knees using her handmade brush, and it was a rainy day. And the convent where she was assigned at that moment was surrounded by dirty roads, muddy pathways. And you know, one of the sisters arrived from the town wearing a mud covered boots. And for some reasons, you know, has ill feelings towards Faustina and what she did. And in a very bad temper, walked over the newly scrubbed wooden floor and she stopped to remove her shoes at the other end of the room. Imagine Faustina spent many hours cleaning that floor and this sister just came in, brought all the mats from, the, from outside. 
And you can just imagine how angry she must have been. But you know, according to Sister Samuela, seeing this, Faustina said nothing. She bent down, picked the dirty shoes and started cleaning again. Sister Samuela, who at the time was still a young novice, asked Faustina, why are you doing this for such an annoying sister? And Sister Faustina replied, for the love of Jesus. For the love of Jesus. Love is patient. Love is kind, not arrogant, nor rude. It is not irritable or resentful. It bears all things. Love endures all things. My dear friends, by nature, we are not merciful. Am I right? By nature, we are not merciful. And it is so difficult to be merciful. It is not easy to act against our wounded, broken nature. And that, why, that is why Jesus said, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In order to be merciful, we need to encounter the merciful Jesus in a more personal and intimate way. We need to fall in love with him and desire to be like him. In this prayer, Faustina started by telling Jesus, I want to be completely transformed into your mercy and to be your living reflection. And what about you? What do you want? Next slide, please. Let us reflect on this question.
we will have our co closing prayer. It is my prayer that our life, our individual life, will always be a reflection of God's mercy, day in and day out, in season and out of season. Let us ask the Lord to grant us this, this uh, grace of being merciful, not only to our families, but it most especially to the people who are difficult to love. So thank you very much, everyone, for being with, with uh, me. And uh, I apologize for the de delay. Um, let us pray. Let us continue to pray for each other in a world that is many times hostile. We need merciful hearts. We need merciful hands. We need merciful feet. We need merciful tongues. And we need merciful ears. Good evening, everyone. Now we can have the closing prayer. Uh, it's a video. Um, Mom, the... The closing prayer is in the slide, last slide. It's in a form of a video. Uh, are you able to to um, play it, or we can just have a closing prayer? the sea. 
sins of the world. Jesus, we trust in you. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on the soul. Thank you, Ms. Tess, for guiding us in our reflection tonight. We resemble God the most when we are merciful. The message of the divine mercy is simple. It is that God loves us, all of us. And God wants us to recognize that his mercy is greater than our sins so that we will call upon him with trust receive his mercy and let it flow through us to others thus all will come to share his joy saint faustina is a constant reminder of the message to trust Jesus endless mercy and to live mercifully towards others. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. May we request everybody to turn on their cameras for our picture taking. Open your camera and smile. One, two, three, smile. Is it done, Clay, or you're going to the next page? Next page. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> not echo. Is 
third page, we have four page in total. Okay. Last page for. Thank you so much. Thank you, Clay. To continue our spiritual growth this Lent and beyond, a group chat will be created for all the participants of Spring Rain Global's 45 Days Lenten Recollection. Inclusion and participation in the group chat will be voluntary. Please join us again tomorrow, 8 p.m. Philippine time, here at Zoom or live via the Spring Rain Global Facebook page for the third day of Spring Rain Global's 45 Days Lenten Recollection, a Lenten journey of faith in the life of the saints. Tomorrow's topic is a Lenten journey of faith in the life of Saint Augustine. And we will be guided in our reflection by Father Richie Mercado, OSA, Advisory Board Member of Spring Rain Global. We hope that you will invite your family and friends, and together let us nurture our faith, love, and devotion to the Lord. As we play our closing song, we bid good night to everybody watching from the Philippines and good day to all those watching from the other parts of the world. Thank you and see you all tomorrow. May God bless us all.
Good night, everyone. See you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.